So when I started in 1960, there was a great thrust at Mill Hill to train the technical staff to be able to do whatever was required and, and a lot of practical requirements. Well, it was a practical job anyway, but it was actually knocking up pieces of bespoke kit that might be needed in the lab and they were encouraged to do that and, and to fulfil that there was a thing called the general purpose workshop. What a joy that was because it was a room where you would go in, there was lathes, there was drawers full of brass and perspex and aluminium and steel, there were benders, there were drills, there was boxes of screws, there was all the things that you wanted to mend your car in this room. Um, the general purpose workshop was a, was a full-size lab and it was run by Ralph Bauer and Alan Delderfield and they were the two permanent engineering staff in there and how it worked was you would go in there, you didn't have to make an appointment, you could just go in any old time and if you um, were competent you could get on and use the drill, you could use the lathe, you could use the milling machine, it all depended on your competence. If you weren't competent then Alan or Ralph Bauer would show you how to use that piece of kit and then you could use it. And they would tell you about safety because it's dangerous using lathes and drills. You know, you don't want chuck keys flying out in your face and all this sort of thing. And they would explain that to you. And after a bit, you built up your confidence and you, your, your competence as well. Of course, that didn't appeal to everybody. Not all technical staff wanted to do that. But if you were running an old MG or something, you certainly did want to do that. Um, and it was a great place to go and have a natter, you know, so, so say, say Neil would say, well, we need this, you know, can you knock something up? And you say, ah, oh, pop down to the general books workshop and you could be down there for most of the morning and you'd meet some of the others down there and you'd have a chat. Jolly nice social place to go. Very pleasant. Um, of course, there were some things that, that were required which weren't within the capacity of, of a tech, an ordinary technician to do. And they would be done by engineering as a request and you would have to get a chip written saying please construct a synchronous counter for example like the one that Neil Brown made but I could give you an example of something that I made in the general purpose workshop if you like to hear that. One of the te techniques we used in chemotherapy at the time to to um, look at anti antibody antigenic reaction was a thing called using an octolone plate. An octolone plate was a petri dish with agar in it. It had little wells stamped in it. There might be five wells with a central well or some had six wells, some had four wells, some had three wells. Anyway, how it worked was you put um, your anti antigen in the middle, or you put your antibodies in the surrounding cells <clears throat> and then the, there would be diffusion from the cells and where the antibody and antigen met there would be a precipitation and that precipitation would show up as a, as a white arc and that would be what you wanted to know. So you could see which antibody the antigen was responding, which, 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 which antibody was responding to the antigen. It would tell you what you wanted to know about the antigenicity of the stuff that you were looking at. And these things um, had to be photographed so that you could put them in your paper when you published it. And at the time we had a photographic department at Mill Hill run by Mr Cyril Sutton and I used to take these um, Petri dishes over to Cyril and say, oh, we've got, we've got you know, half a dozen Octolone plates to photograph, would you photograph them? And Cyril was quite reluctant to do this because they weren't easy to do because you needed to shine instant light in to, to illuminate these, these bands of precipitation and then you had to have a dark ground and it was a bit of a faff for him to set up and he was it always and Neil would say, No, hasn't hasn't Cyril done those photographs yet? And I'd say, Well, you know, took them in yesterday and he hasn't done them. And so I said, I think I could make a camera that would that would do this. So I built an Octolone plate camera and I uh, made it from um, a big we, we used to get starch in for starch gel electrophoretics. It used to come in big cardboard tubs about a foot across and about two foot high. And I thought I could use one of those to, to make a camera in the general purpose workshop. And uh, I got a, a piece of perspex and made a ring at the bottom and I put some festoon bulbs, you know, the little bulbs with filaments in, festoon bulbs, in a circle. In the middle of that I put a dark ground, which is a piece of black feltish paper. And then I got an old lens and fitted it halfway up and then by fiddling around with the lens and, and at the top of the of the box we would put a, a, a glass photographic slide. So we'd put a ground glass slide there and I could focus it all and we could get an image on this slide and had to do all this in the dark room of course. 
and then if you take the ground glass slide away you could put a photographic plate that we used to use quarter plates for this and after a few trial and error um, with getting the exposure time right got some really good and consistent images and the, the advantage of the Octoloni plate camera was that from then on all the pictures we got were similar they, they, they hadn't been set up each time with angled poise lamps and various things to do it and so you got a nice consistent um, type of image which looked better in published papers so um, that's what that's one of the things an example of something that I made in the general purpose workshop and I I went over to Cyril oh, I'd mentioned to Cyril Sutton that I was going to do this and he didn't think I could do it and then I showed him some of the photographs that we'd taken with this and he he decided that he'd like to have the camera in photographic departments so that he could use it for other people's Ocaloni plates in other departments and so he got the camera but then he would do them pretty quickly after that. So the, the upshot of that was that we got a quick turnaround on the photographs and it was an example of how useful the general purpose workshop was. I mean this was a, a fairly simple thing but it, well, you know there was a lot, I can't remember any other examples of things that I made in there but there must have been lots of other things but, but uh, I can't remember what they were. <laughs>